I want to say voiceover work is why I still have the house. Because when I finished the Petty Duke show, I thought, oh God, what's going to happen now? Because we've been on it for three years. And that meant that it was going to be hard to get jobs. And, and I'd made better money than I'd ever made before in my life. So how the hell was I going to, what was going to happen to us, basically? And my kids were getting ready to go to college, not too, so I didn't know. And uh, a guy named Bud Davis called me up and said, would you be interested in doing voiceover work? I said, I don't know. He said, well, why don't you come in? He says, I, you have to sign a, an exclusive contract with me. I said, OK, well, I'll tell my other agent that, my theatrical agent. And I did. And he said, well, I've got a fella. I said, yeah, but this guy called me and asked. He says, all right, what the hell, go ahead and do it. So I went in. And Bud, all you do in voiceover is you go and audition. And you get them or you don't. And I. From the beginning, I started to get him. And I think maybe it had something to do with my, with my persona from the Patty Duke show, because I did mostly warm and friendly. And uh, the sound of my voice, I don't know what it's like right now, because I've been talking so long. But you know, I could always put a little wrinkle in it like that if I wanted to. And I say, uh, I, used to, I, I used to have a radio spot I did that was, uh, uh, oh god, what was it? Joan Gerber and I did it together, and she did a little laugh at the end of it. It was, uh, oh, California prunes, the funny fruit that does so much for you. It was kind of, that was kind of the way I did, that was the approach. So I did a fair amount of stuff that was kind of like that. And, and once I started working out here, I was like, I, I could, I'd never worked that much in my life. He, you know, it was kind of like what happened to me in television except that here it was every day. Uh, and uh, so uh, for about three, four, maybe even five years, I was really kind of the flavor. For three years, I was the flavor of the month. I, I got every job I went for. Uh, I mean, I, I used to keep track of, of, because I was interested in seeing how well I was doing. And every audition I went on, uh, I, my average was one out of two. If I went out outside the office, if I auditioned at the office, it was one out of four. So I mean, I, I couldn't lose. And it, it stayed that way for about 10 years, though it was never quite as good as it was the first three or four. But it was just wonderful. I just worked a lot. And if you work a lot and voice over, you don't have to, they don't have to bargain anything special. It's built into the contract. And some parts of the contract are kind of crazy. For instance, if you do uh, if you do promos for movies, er Ernie Anderson made a million dollars the first year he did that, and that's because there was a fixed price of two hundred dollars a spot, and he did five thousand spots that year, so that was a million dollars. I never I never got into that, but I I did do a lot of I did do a lot of promos. And I worked for ABC for a while, so I, I it was just, and it was wonderful. All you had to do was go in there and do it, and then you could come with, you had to put makeup on, you didn't have to learn anything, everything. And I, had a, I also had a knack for timing, because they'd say, uh, now, that was 32 seconds. Can you, I said, what do you need? They said, 28. I said, so that's four, four thirty-six. That's one eighth. That's 12%. Okay, 12.5% off. And then I'd do it, and I'd be right on the tick. The percentage was the trick. I said, I can take up to 20% off of almost anything, but no more. <laughs> and especially if it's real short, then I can't do it. And then I would go in and I would do these spots over and over again. I got, I got, uh, uh, I got a Kellogg's thing called um, ERA. And they, they, I said, I think we should pronounce it ERA because it'll be clearer if I, than if I say ERA. So, they said, OK. And I was going to be on camera for them. And they scrapped that idea. And then they said, oh, by the way, maybe you'll do the voiceover. I said, OK. I didn't know what that was going to mean. I'd, I'd go in, and I'd, I hardly made any, over, any residual money on it. But I would go in and redo the, the, the same line. Somewhere there's a greasy dirt that air won't get out completely, but it'll almost always do better than powders. It used to take me six seconds. And I think it may probably is still right, something like that. So I mean, you know, it was just dumb that I would remember that. But. And when there was an animated character attached to it, like a Milton the Toaster, how uh, would you come up with the voice for that? Usually, well, usually that came from from reading to my kids. <coughs> I used to read 
uh, uh, Winnie the Pooh. And the voice for Winnie in Winnie the Pooh was a sort of a chubby kind of little voice like that. I would read, you know, and hi, hi, uh, we're okay, Eeyore. And it just, I didn't like that. And this character was named Milton the Toaster. And I thought, well, maybe it's got a little New York in there. So I'd say, hi, gang, Milton the Toaster here. And so I would have just a little New York, and I can't do real good New York, but <laughs> it was good enough for that. <coughs> and so uh, I, I did it that way, and I got the job. It's one of the few cartoons I've auditioned for that I got. I almost never get cartoons because I can't change my voice enough. The people who do cartoon work regularly can do all the way up and down the scale.